In this video, we take a deep look into what features Unreal Engine can bring to next-gen PES and why you should be excited about this new phase of PES we're about to witness. You might be looking at this footage and thinking there's no way PES 2022 will look like that. Not even with Unreal Engine 5. Well, I have news for you. PES 2021 on PC already almost looks like that, using many mods that edit the cameras and sunlight while adding fog and fixing the grass, and I've linked these mods in the description. But what PES 2021 doesn't do is move like that, and that's the point I'm trying to get across using these clips. This gameplay view is the one you'll be seeing 99% of the time you're playing. Do you notice the amazing faces with glistening sweat drops and the spectacular cloth physics? I mean, these are all quite important, and I'll be covering them in this video but they're not what makes this real footage look real. What makes these clips look real is ultimately the way players move and respond to the ball. A flexible, robust, and responsive animation engine is the only thing Konami really needs to change. But is there a way to capture every single player's real movement in his particular style, everywhere on the pitch with every possible position of the ball? Whenever a task seems too complicated, the answer is almost always AI. These tennis points you're watching actually never happened, an AI simply watched hours of Federer and Djokovic playing tennis and learned how they moved to the ball depending on their initial position and the ball's position, and figured out how they hit the ball depending on where they were in relation to it and where they wanted it to go. Then the AI reconstructed a tennis match where you get to move the players and hit the ball wherever you want to, while the AI digs out the proper animation for every single frame. I've linked to a review of this very intriguing paper in the video description. But yeah. This is quite possibly the only way to get any realistic looking sports game. Animations should also allow for a wider range of movements. For example, tiny body feints should be easy to pull off depending on the degree the left stick is flicked. To be fair, this already exists in a more limited degree in PES, with the way Gomez moves here, or in the subtle change in direction by Trent as if he was about to stop. And I think it's time to bring back the advantage icon, because you can't always see the referee's arm gestures. Defenders should also act with animations that convey urgency when closing down on dangerous players. Dribbling mechanics should allow good dribblers to slow down their dribble when one-on-one -on -one with defenders, whose running animation also allows them to intervene with these cautious dribbles. I must say, the absolute worst animations in PES have always been the robotic running animations. The way it just keeps cycling doesn't feel organic at all, and it should be the first thing to disappear in next-gen PES. Don't get me wrong, PES has some beautiful animations, like this passing animation by Trent, or the way Matip stumbles while making this pass, or the way Mane continues his dribble while stumbling. But yeah, the robotic dribbling animations are the worst aspect of the old game. And look at how Cruz's momentum carries him past Iniesta, or the way Modric reacts to Suarez next to him before he turns to face Iniesta in a pose that allows him to cover the biggest area around him. There are no buttons that can manually make Iniesta lift the pass over Modric, so the range of passing animations needs to take the player's passing stats in mind, which is how Iniesta is able to stealthily flick the ball over to Neymar without too much prep. We currently have a similar system in PES 2021, where even with full manual controls, a good passer will do things like add a spin to their pass to make the best out of your manual input. I love how Neymar receives the ball with a cautious animation because he's surrounded by players trying to steal the ball. And because he's in close proximity to other players, he is always facing them and moving using small pushes of the ball. It also shouldn't be impossible for players like Neymar to possess the ability to suddenly change the direction in a realistic way that uses his exploding momentum. Faking a pass should depend on how long the pass button was pressed. For example, Neymar's slight fake here can be done with a slight tap of the passing button followed by another slight tap to cancel it without pushing the ball too far. When I press a certain direction while receiving a pass, my player should simply turn to face that direction as long as it wasn't a super cancel. In PES, you can currently choose the direction you receive a ball into, but not the direction you face when receiving it. And look at how Rakitic scans the field before receiving the pass, which should affect the accuracy of its weight and direction. On the other hand, Modric, who isn't a defender, doesn't do it, which is why he fails to notice Neymar's run or anticipate Iniesta's run, both happening behind his back. I also don't remember seeing any player in PES kick the ball into the ground 
to have it bounce over a sliding defender. Players should also be aware of the position of their teammates and make room for them. This is a real problem in PES and has been for the last several years, where players seem to be completely oblivious to where other players are, resulting in players running into each other all the time. Oh and for heaven's sake, make goal celebrations continue through the in-game action, and bring an end to the cutscenes that are completely removed from the actual action. Like here Cavani gets injured after scoring, but look at him suddenly run in the cutscene, where by the way, all players will always have the same height and build. So with the importance of the in-game animations out of the way, let's take a look at the rest of the top visual features of Unreal Engine for next-gen PES. Let me start with a disclaimer. PES developers don't have the best track record of making the best out of the game's engine. For example, Metal Gear Solid 5, which came out in 2015, made significantly better use of the Fox engine when it came to sunlight, weather in general, and cloth physics simulation, while PES had rigid jerseys and horrible sunlight. Even modders were able to give the PC version better sunlight and fog effects than the developers who were paid to do the job. So even with 3 years in development, I'm not extremely optimistic. So with this out of the way, at number 2 after animations, there is next-gen ray trace lighting. It's a well-known fact that Japanese game companies are pretty far behind their European and North American counterparts when it comes to graphics. But I'll be extremely disappointed if a game as easy to run as PES doesn't come with ray trace lighting next year. Miles Morales on the PS5 showed that the console was powerful enough to handle ray trace lighting in an environment a thousand times more complicated than any football match. Even if they had to stick with screen space reflections to maintain 60 frames per second, the key limitation being that only details in the camera view can be reflected, which is way more than enough for a football game with no shiny buildings all over the view. Plus, we all saw how Cyberpunk's failure to deliver next-gen quality on the PS5 ended up with a scandalous recall by the company. Ray trace lighting allows for every single hour of the day in every season to produce not only a different warmth profile, but different shadows, making no two games look alike. Football games are some of the least resource intensive and visually demanding games in the grand scheme of games out there, so it would be a great shame for Konami to miss out on ray trace lighting in PES 2022, which affects every single element in every frame regardless of the camera angle you're using. At number 3, the reason grass isn't higher on this list is because ray trace lighting affects everything, including the color of the grass. But Unreal Engine boasts some of the most beautiful and most realistic looking grass, which is the reason I'm confident that no matter how bad the animations are, this game will look stunning compared to last year's game. I'm talking here about photorealistic grass with photorealistic color variation. Unreal Engine has animated grass that moves with the wind and reacts to the ball and the player's feet on top of it. Yep, grass will look stunning in Unreal Engine. At number 4, there are the Unreal Engine weather effects. Now, while only Unreal Engine 5 will have dynamic volumetric clouds, which allow light to cut through them, producing realistic shadows, I'm most excited about Unreal Engine's realistic rain effects, that are very subtle the way rain should look. You're actually not supposed to see the rain droplets when the background is bright, like a well-lit football pitch, and all you should see is a hazy fog in the background. Speaking of fog, Unreal Engine 4.2 and above boasts some of the most beautiful and easiest fog effects to implement. I say easiest because PES developers apparently weren't able to implement the effect in PES 2021, even though Fox Engine was perfectly capable of producing fog as demonstrated in Jeremiah Soba's Foggy Winter Weather mod. Speaking of which, I need to give a shout out to Don88, who is not only responsible for making some of the most beautiful stadiums for PES 2021, including Anfield which features in all my videos, but he also taught Jeremiah how to edit the fog, which adds a whole new dimension of realism to the way PES 2021 looks giving the exciting gameplay the look it deserves, and is a big part of how the game looks in real life, especially in the winter. With three years to learn Unreal Engine, hopefully this time they include fog in PES 2022. At number 5, you've already seen how beautiful stadiums can look like when rendered in Unreal Engine 4. Combined with ray trace lighting and high fidelity assets, the age of photorealistic stadiums will finally arrive to PES. But as a PC gamer, I'm actually more excited for the fact it might be a lot easier to convert FIFA's library of photorealistic stadiums from Frostbite to Unreal Engine, easier than converting them to Fox Engine. This means that before the game even launches, we might have an Unreal version of every stadium already present in FIFA. Although we might have to wait a while for the newer stadiums that haven't been made in FIFA yet to get ported over to PES. Unreal Engine's MetaHumans is actually not exclusive to Unreal Engine 5. Unreal 4.26 and above can run it and a free version is already out. MetaHumans takes real-time digital human creation from weeks or even months to less than an hour, at an unprecedented standard of quality, fidelity, and realism. 
What really sells the face as realistic is the incredible skin texture and beautiful facial animations. When your character is finished, it's already rigged and ready to animate in Unreal Engine. Problem is, the Meta Human Engine needs a ton of manual work to edit faces one by one. The pest production team is quite small, and given that for the last three years they haven't been able to properly implement basics like sunlight, grass, and a fog weather effect which already exists in Fox Engine, I have my doubts that this small team will invest time into manually crafting every single player's face using this Meta Human Engine. That said, there are two ways the pest team can get it done properly. The best way is by using AI to examine photos of players from several angles using a simple Google image search. This AI has the ability to manipulate the 3D model to look like these photos. I've linked Dr. Caroline's amazing review of this 2017 paper in the description of this video. And even though this highly successful technique was published over 4 years ago, I doubt the pest team will invest in AI to painlessly render every player's faces. Which brings me to the second way outsource the face editing task to every gamer and modder around the world, and have the face models shareable across platforms in a server Konami runs. The only problem is, only faces they have a license for would be shareable across their server. Another problem is the fact Konami doesn't even have servers for PES, which relies on peer-to-peer -peer connections, which is why online lag makes it unplayable for me. But hopefully, even that should improve with Unreal Engine, which includes a robust multiplayer API, mainly used for real-time action games. This feature is built in, and all the developer has to do is call the multiplayer function from either C++ or Blueprint. But back to faces, I love how accurately MetaHuman is capable of rendering a face, and I hope the team figures out a way to use it to accurately render all the player faces in most leagues of the world. And by the way, even if MetaHuman won't be available on PES, which I highly doubt, the older versions of Unreal Engine faces were quite spectacular too. So yeah, either way, we're getting amazing player faces next year. And yes, MetaHuman comes with accurate hair physics too, in case you were wondering. It's very resource efficient and accurately reacts to forces like wind as well as player movement. Speaking of physics, compared to most games out there, football games have very few materials that need to have accurate physics. Among these few materials are clothes. Fortunately, Unreal Engine also boasts incredible cloth physics, with clothing accurately reacting to the different forces acting upon them. It's quite low on this list because you won't notice it from the gameplay view, but it's good we finally get to have decent cloth physics in a PES game. Finally, and this is at the end because it's a personal favorite of mine, but I've actually always wanted to play a football game from inside the stadium, controlling the players while I'm seated on a couch that moves along the sideline as it follows the action on the pitch. I'm talking about VR integration, which Unreal Engine excels at. You can possibly place yourself anywhere on the pitch, and choose if your couch will remain static in the center or how much it will move along the sidelines. You can enjoy a high bird's eye perspective or sink low closer to the players. It's extremely immersive when you can just turn your head and see your reserves warming up. This also opens possibilities for more immersive presentation in all aspects, including pre-game graphics and in-game stats. The possibilities are endless. This reminds me of the very cool augmented reality lineup feature anyone can have using OneFootball's app. Using the link is a good way of supporting the channel without paying anything, so give it a try! And since you're inside the stadium, you're not limited to what a camera is showing you. You can easily turn around and see where your players are, and no longer need to use a radar to spot runs on the far ends of the pitch. 2021 is the year of foveated rendering. With your normal vision, you only actually see 5% of your visual field in full details. That's the area in the center of your visual field. Your brain fills in the gaps. Try keeping your eyes on the left side of the screen while trying to read the words on the right side, which would appear mangled up and difficult to read until you actually move your eyes to the right and look at it. This is the way normal vision works. You can only see details in the center of your field. This area, called the fovea, is a mere 3 degrees across, the size of your thumb at arm's length, and resolution falls off rapidly away from the fovea. The obvious solution is to render pixels with variable density across the scene to match the eye's resolution. This is called foveated rendering. I'm sure all of you can appreciate how much easier it would be to hold frame rate if you only had to render one-tenth the pixels. But my prediction is that foveated rendering will be a core VR technology in five years. What foveated rendering does is track exactly where you're looking in VR and render that in full resolution. While only rendering 5% of the pixels in the rest of your visual field, then AI fills the gaps to make a complete image. Rendering only the 5% that matters saves a tremendous amount of GPU power, which is why games will actually run several times smoother with foveated rendering in VR, 
compared to flat gaming where the entire screen is rendered even though you won't see details in most of it. With Unreal Engine being extremely friendly towards VR game development, Konami needs to avoid falling behind again because I guarantee you EA already has a robust VR development team with experience in VR games such as Star Wars Squadrons and can easily bring the feature to FIFA. PES is in dire need for several gameplay improvements, like the broken referee that can't see collisions and won't award most fouls if they happen in the penalty box, but that's a topic for another video, so be sure to like this video and subscribe so you don't miss it. I'm not just saying that because they're sponsoring this video, but any football fan should really have the OneFootball app on his phone. It is by far the fastest and easiest way to keep track of all the matches going on throughout the week, as well as all the interesting football stories and all the transfers, loans, and even the rumored transferred are featured on it. So you're not surprised when Pogba moves back to UV this summer. You can dive even deeper by tapping any player in the lineup and know how successful their ball touches were and how many times they won an aerial duel. When you start up the app, it asks you which teams and countries you're following, and tailors your experience to these preferences. You can get it for free through the link in the description. It's a no-bullshit app that jumps straight to the point without any fluff or excess fat. Give it a try, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.